the second part to today's little ride out. Um, yeah, second part to today's little ride out, and it's a bit of reminiscing and harping back to my uh, very early childhood. Uh, just to set the scene, uh, my mum and dad split up when I was very young, 18 months old I think, which would have been about 1966, um, and she had to sort of fend for herself and look after me, so she became a housekeeper, a cook housekeeper, where you could, uh, and she you know, you would find these housekeeping jobs where you could, you could take, they could take one child. Because I was very small, and she, uh, she, she got a job um, for a doctor uh, who lived in Park Green. Well, we're not far from Park Green. We're in that territory here. Um, And the doctor lived, and his wife, and I think they had an adopted son, yeah, lived in this really large house in Park Green, which we're going to go and have a look at the location where that house was in a minute. Um, and this house, oh, I loved it. I, I remember it, it was massive, and the garden was enormous. And uh, they had, it was so big, they had a gardener. Um, and we lived in sort of a, a sort of wing of this house. Not a wing like you doing now, but it was a wing where there was a, a bedroom and a house, probably the servant quarters for want of a better description. Um, and we lived in this house, and she looked after the house and did their meals for them. And the doctor who had his surgery there, and it was just a wonderful play. I remember it as a little kid. It was wonderful. The garden was massive and um, absolutely massive. And I was probably the gardener around. I think his name was Mr. Tease. Mr. Tees, I think his name was. T E E S. Um, and I'd follow him round doing what he was doing the gardening and just remember it being a oh, lovely place to live. And um, um, I think what happened was is they, they sold the house. The, the, the doctor sold the house. Um, and they, uh, it was subsequently redeveloped. The house was demolished, and a sort of a close was built in its place. Um, and it was just down from Licky Hills as well. So my mum would take me up, and we walk up around the Licky Hills. I think it was probably she probably had this job for probably say no longer than a year, and it would have been round about ninety. Uh, 1966, 1967, maybe slightly later, and uh, this is the road. So we would uh, walk up this hill, and she'd be pushing me in push chair, and then we'd turn into this road, which had a bit of a strange name, Twattling Road, Twattling Road. And we'd walk down here, and I remember walking down here with my mum, as a little kid of three, four years old, We'd walk down here, because she'd go and see her family back where in, in Smedic where they lived. And so we'd come down here, and we'd walk down here back to this uh, the place. And I think she had a day a week off or something. Um, unfortunately, she's not around to, to tell me anymore. But we'd we'd walk down this road, and somewhere on the right here is where this house was. And it was called the Needing House. Um, of course, the house is now gone. However, there's something still there. Uh, I just need to find it. So, still remember, holding her hand, walking down here. Sometimes in the winter, sometimes in days like this in the summer. Wonderful. I think we're close to where it was. Not this one. It's 
definitely here somewhere. Here it is. The needing drive. So what I want to do is just park here. This, this was the entrance to the house. Um, let's go down. Let's go down. This was the entrance to the to the house. Uh, where these houses now stand was this lovely big house and this massive garden. I can say what a lovely place. It is. So that house was one house was replaced with all of these houses. They used to be. They used to be. You could think that the the pillar at the entrance gate was still there. But this was definitely the entrance to the house. It looks as though. Yeah, I think there was a pillar here, but it looks like it's gone, somebody's replaced the fence. So what I'm going to just do, just pull in, I'll take a picture, and then I'll carry on the reminiscences in a second. But what a lovely area, and we had to leave it sadly. We have to leave it. Wonderful. Happy memories. Very, very happy memories. There you go. Let's take a picture. And then we'll... Uh, we'll move on. As I recall... Over to the left here somewhere, there's a cottage, there's a cottage. And in the cottage, and there were an old couple, I think their name was, as I recall, was Mr and Mrs Gummery. You know, you rely on a memory of a very small child at the time here. And, uh, they would uh, give me little gifts. One of them was uh, you know these windmills that you get. I seem to have a memory of these. The blow in the wind, coloured. You would uh, have it on a stalk, uh, on a long sort of thin stick, and they would blow it in the wind. One, I'm sure they, I'm sure they gave me one of them at the time as a present. And uh, it was wonderful, wonderful happy times. So what I'm going to do now is the uh, the doctor and his wife. Their name was Cashmore. The doctor and his wife moved not far from where this house was. <coughs> A lot of these places have been developed into over that 50 odd years have been developed into you know new modern properties but uh, yeah so there's a little uh, well, just second reason for today's um, right out let's have a look at that to reminisce what I'll try and do if I've uh, he's put side by side the, the maps, which you get maps. Uh, I've put side by side the maps of the of maybe the 50s, 60s if they've got it, with what now stands there. The University of Scotland do it, I think. So if I can do that, I'll put the uh, put them on a screenshot so you can see the house that was there before if it's shown on a map. Right, we're back at the computer, and uh, I've put the two maps side by side, the current map, um, and a 19, uh, let's have a look at the dates on this one, 
uh, Ordnance Survey 1949 to 1972. So we can see, as I mentioned, the Dunedin house was here. If you look on the right hand screen, it's here. House set back from the road, quite a big expanse of property surrounding it. Here's Twatling Road here. And if you look to the left, on the left screen now, you can see Dunedin Drive. I parked up on the corner here. This is Dunedin Drive. So the house actually stood where that sort of driveway to these houses were here. So there's the location. Today, Dunedin Drive. And there, if you look back to the right, is where the house stood back in the... Um, late 60s when when me and my mum lived there for a short spell and the plot and the side of the, the side of the house where we live looking at the right hand map again the the left hand part of that building where i'm sort of running the the uh the icon now is where the kitchen was and where we had a little sort of uh little quarters there or a little um um sitting room with a couple of bedrooms there so that's the um that's the map of where it is and then just going over, uh, I told you that the names were Cashmore, and then I remembered afterwards that they were members of St John's Ambulance um, at the time. So this is, doing a bit of research online, this is the St John's Ambulance Directory of 1968 and 69, which is, well, I think when, 68 I think is around about when we were there. So if I do a search on here now, uh, and I look for Cashmore, Uh, and there they are. We find them down here. I'll see if I can just zoom in. And we find them. I say it was a doctor and his wife. And there they are. So, uh, Mrs. Cashmore. There they lived at 21 Twatlin Road, Barn Green. She was a county superintendent of John's Ambulance. And then the county surgeon was, Mr. was Dr. Cashmore. Uh, there he is, uh, Dunedin, Twatlin Road, Barn Green. So any doubt I had in my mind that what I was remembering was uh, inaccurate or potentially incorrect, um, I've now sort of validated that that isn't, isn't the case at all. Uh, they did live there. Uh, it was a lovely place. Um, and uh, unfortunately, sadly, it is no more. So just to look back again, just to quickly look back, Dunedin Drive, where we were I was yesterday, parked on the corner, that's where the house stood. So there we go, so now back to the video. So the, the doctor and his wife moved to a house, and a newly house they had built, I think that's it on the right there house they had built, or a bungalow they had built, uh, in, down here. And uh, this road is also the road where Ron Atkinson, not that I don't follow football, but I know who he is, Ron Atkinson had a house. Uh, Fiery Hill Road, I think it's called. So yeah, that was what my mum did. Uh, one of the things she had to do at the time, in the late 60s, if you were a one-parent family and you needed to uh, find a way to make ends meet, that's how she went and became a, a housekeeper. She did that for about four or five years, I think. There were various other places she uh, she went to, but that's the one that stuck out in my mind. Cause I, it was such an idyllic place to live in. Um, and they were lovely people. I remember one Christmas, um, they bought me a, a tricycle. Uh, the doctor and his wife bought me a tricycle. It had a red seat, blue frame. Um, and that was the, uh, one of my first, first gifts that was. First gifts of uh, non from, from from sort of not from members of the family. 
so that was uh, there you go there's a little bit of uh, a reminisce and a revisit of uh, from my early childhood hope you found that interesting and now I've captured it so future generations if they want to of uh, my family can see it so this is sort of feeding in partly to what I want to try and do in terms of uh, doing some genealogy research that involves me uh, being out on the bike doing it there's more to come there's lots in the planning for that so this is Bart Green what affluent area for anybody who doesn't know here and lovely south west of Birmingham on route to Redditch lovely place lovely lovely place what I might do on future videos is take you some other places that I, uh, I have memories of from when I was a kid I don't know whether you guys ever feel it, but you know, when you go back somewhere, like I just did, that sees from your dim and distant childhood. Um, oh, church is nice. Do you, uh, do you ever ask yourself, is this memory correct? Am I, am I remembering this? Did this happen? I find myself doing that occasionally. Am I making this up or did this happen? Um, I suppose that's just something with as things get further and further back into the, the distant annals of time. You, you, you start to you know, doubt your, your recollection. I think I'm. Yeah. I'm pretty certain that what I've shown you is uh, is accurate. Our church is nice. Nice little town, village. There. Oh no, let's go and have a look at a few, up a few back, back alleys. Lovely stuff. Uh, something else, I found myself just recently, I don't know whether I mean, I seem to be in in reflective mode a lot lately. Um, just think about, you know, where we are now and what the, you know, what, what happened in the past and what life was like in the past and uh, yesterday one of my uh, one of my daughters and her family have, have gone on their first foreign holiday together and they were, they've gone back to a place um, in Spain, Salou, which was the first place that I took my, took them when they were kids, my four daughters, took them when they were kids, uh, and my wife as well of course, uh, on their first holiday abroad and that was in 1997. So they've gone and took their two children who are uh, seven and three and the grandchildren. So they took them on this holiday. And, you, and that just got me uh, thinking about how lucky any of us that have grandchildren are that we actually can get a second chance in many ways of. Uh, of the experience that we had when we brought our own kids up 
and the things we did with them. And for me, often, I, in thinking about that, I go, well, I wish I'd been more like this, or I wish I'd done more like that. But you can't think like that because you are, you are what you are. You know, you're a product of your own upbringing and a product of your own environment. So, yeah, could I have been a better father? Absolutely. But did I do a bad job? No, I didn't. If I had my time over again, would I do it differently? Yes, I would. And it's just really reflective mode that how lucky um, I feel particularly that I'm getting this second chance to see the, the next generation grow up. And uh, and you start thinking to yourself, well, um, will I see a third generation? Um, who knows? Will I see great-grandchildren? Who knows? Uh, yeah, so very reflective and, and the strange thing is as well I'm, I'm watching videos on YouTube of, uh, of you guys that watch this stuff and I watch your channels that a lot of you seem to be having the same sort of outlook on life and uh, it's really interesting to see and, uh, and it emphasises to me just what a great community if you stay away from the negativity what a great community YouTube can be for people who, especially like us, who have a, a love for, for motorbikes. Um, and we can share our experiences, uh, thoughts, and all that sort of good stuff. A little bit, uh, yeah, as I say, reflective mode at the moment. <coughs> approaching my 59th birthday just over a month's time so I'm sure that's playing a part in it as well and uh, again this video you'll either say oh, that's crap turn it off or you go yeah it's all right interesting something there that I've got in common but yeah, what I'm trying to do is uh, at the end of the day all, we, all the videos involve us riding around the countryside on motorbikes <laughs> to varying degrees um, so I try and mix them up if I can. Well, I love to be out with the boyos, and uh, now we've got comms working. It's great to catch some of the the funny moments and the banter. Apologies for the swearing that you get sometimes. The funny moments and the banter. Um, I often wonder should I cut it or shall I leave it. Uh, I've concluded for the most part, unless it's too bad, I'm probably going to leave it. But it's uh, it, it's it's uh, now it's what you know it's what it's like for it's, it's you know, see the reality but so things like that and then what I'll try and do is mix it up put, put some variety into what can be a very samey sort of content of riding around uh, the countryside on on different types of bikes uh, well there you go well I'm gonna <coughs> excuse me I'm gonna probably shut up now and let the camera roll a little bit. If something comes to mind that, again, it's worth saying, I'll uh, I'll drop it in. Oh, by the way, I don't know where I am. This is uh, definitely freestyling. But oh look, no, oh, no, thought it was someone exciting. Hollow tree lane. Oh, would this have been named after a, a hollow tree that was here at some point? Probably. Yes, I'm going to channel my inner lanes explorer. Hello, Peter. And just shush and let the bike speak for itself as we as we ride through this land, this uh, environment.
this is a lovely little uh, wrist bit of road road that takes us down from the Licky Hills into Rednall a few years since I've last been down here to be fair on scram accoutrements and a little bit about my early childhood. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll wrap up at that and I'll say thanks again. Look after yourselves and uh, take care of it. See you all later.